Hi everyone and welcome to another Flight Deck to Sim tutorial. In today's video I'll be demonstrating the crosswind takeoff technique for the Boeing 737 using the Zebo mod in X-Plane 11 and the Thrustmaster TCA yoke along with the Logitech Cytec Pro rudder pedals. Now like with all my tutorials the guidance is not to be used for real world training. Although the information provided is the technique I use when flying on the line might have been tailored specifically to operate this multi-crew aircraft single pilot in a desktop simulator. Remember, this is purely for entertainment purposes only. Now today we are in Bristol, holding short here of runway 09. We're simulating a sector to Dublin and we're currently using live weather conditions at the time of recording. The surface wind right now is 350 at 16 gusting 33 knots. And it means taking off from runway 09, uh, the wind will be coming in from the left. And just before we talk about the crosswind takeoff technique, I'll talk a little bit about the limitations with regards to crosswinds for departure. Now my operator, we have a standard crosswind limitation of uh, 33 knots for a dry runway, 25 knots for when it's wet, and we can increase that to 33 knots in certain situations, and that's for a standard 45 metre wide runway. Now on narrow runways, the crosswind limits are dropped, it's usually specific to the airport, and we have briefing documentation which will explain all this in a bit more detail. Also if the runway is contaminated, based off the braking action, the crosswind uh, limit of departure is reduced based off each braking action. As the braking action decreases, uh, so does the crosswind limit as well. Now also for strong crosswind conditions we desirably want to select a higher thrust setting and in the OPT we have the options of selecting whatever thrust setting we need for departure. If wind shear is reported we even have an option to select a wind shear which will give us the full 26 required and this is primarily to uh, reduce the risks of tail strikes which is a lot more likely in strong crosswind conditions. Right let's talk a little bit about the takeoff uh, technique. So we're going to get ourselves lined up on runway 09, received our takeoff clearance and we'll set takeoff thrust and we'll, as we do with all takeoffs, apply light forward pressure to increase nose steering effectiveness. Now this is very important on a strong crosswind uh, takeoff, especially at lower speeds where the rudder isn't quite as effective. By applying nose down pressure we're adding a little bit of weight onto that nose wheel and we just use our rudder to maintain centre line. Obviously the, the tiller could be used but we don't at all want to use that during takeoff. The rudder has a little bit of input on the nose wheel and that helps maintain directional control at lower speeds. Now, as the aircraft accelerates, we have the wind pushing on the vertical stabiliser. Now, as I said today, the wind's coming in from the left. Now, as the wind pushes on the vertical stabiliser to the left, that's going to want to make the aircraft weather cock into wind. So that's going to want to force the nose to the left. OK, now, if you were to make no input on the rudder, the aircraft would just drive off to the left. It'd be on the grass before you... Uh, would even realize it. So what do we need to do? We need to apply right rudder to maintain centre line. Now at lower speeds the rudder isn't quite as effective which is why we have that forward pressure on the nose wheel but as the aircraft accelerates the rudder becomes more effective. We're applying right rudder of course to maintain centre line and that's all you need to do. It's not pop the rudder, just maintain centre line with rudder as the aircraft accelerates. As you get faster the rudder becomes more effective you might find you need uh, less rudder uh, as the aircraft uh, continues down the runway. Now, we've got all this uh, right rudder in during the takeoff roll in this example today. What's going to want to, or what the aircraft is going to want to do is also lift the wing. You want the wind coming from the left, we've got right rudder. The secondary effect of that rudder is, is roll, and you might find that the wing wants to roll to the right. Now, what you need to do with the ailerons is as you accelerate, you gradually increase the aileron into wind to keep the wings approximately level. Now, you've got to be a bit careful with this at the 737. Too much aileron into wind you'll make the spoilers deploy on the upwind wind, uh, side of the, the wing. Now this will have a negative effect on your takeoff performance, it'll decrease lift, increase drag. So you just want to have enough aileron into wind to maintain approximately uh, wings level beyond 10 degrees uh, roll displacement on the control column the spoilers will deploy. Now as the aircraft accelerates you'll find yourself approaching V1 and VR, you'll be in this sort of cross control state as mentioned today, right rudder, left aileron into wind. And it's very important that during the rotation you maintain centre line and wings level. Now as you rotate you'll have your rudder in here, you keep that in, the aircraft's going to be 
uh, in a, a side slip if you don't. And then as you rotate, you might find you need to increase aileron input into wind as the, the weight comes off the wheels. The aircraft will really want to, to lift that wing. So during rotation, you use as much aileron as you need to keep the wings level. That is so important in the 737, especially as the, the engine pods are so close to the, to the ground. You don't want to risk a pod strike or a tail strike or anything like that. Now, as you rotate, normal rotation rate of 2 to 2.5 degrees per second. You get to the dead band at approximately 10 degrees, where there's a loss of lift caused by disruption of the airflow over the uh, horizontal stabilizer. So you increase the back pressure in the dead band and keep the rudder in, keep the roll in. And as you smoothly get airborne, you can neutralize the control column and rudder pedal and just allow the aircraft to weathercock into the wind and then you just can smoothly look onto the flight directors uh, if you have them on and engaged uh, in LNAV and the takeoff mode and that's it you'll just then climb out weathercocked into wind and that's pretty much it that is the the crosswind takeoff uh, technique uh, let's go give it a go Right then, we're all lined up on runway 09, just got our final takeoff clearance. The surface wind now, according to the METAR, should be the same in X-Pen 11, is 360 at 20, lost the gust, but still quite a strong crosswind from the left. So remember, I'll be using right rudder to maintain center line and uh, gradually putting left aileron into wind during the takeoff roll to maintain wings level. During the rotation, use as much aileron as required to keep the wings level, and as soon as we're airborne, we can generally uh, gently neutralize the controls, centralize everything, let the aircraft weathercock into wind and climb out safely. Right, uh, let's give it a go. We'll release the parking brake. The controls in the simulator are a lot lighter than the real aircraft, so do uh, bear with me if I do over control slightly. There we are. Just make sure both those engines are stabilized at 40%, which they are. Stabilized, set takeoff thrust. There's the light forward pressure coming in. We are takeoff thrust sets indicates normal. I can already feel the aircraft weather cocking, so here comes the right rudder to maintain center line. A little bit of aileron into it already. Check, release the forward pressure. Rudder's now much more effective. Uh, maintaining center line with rudder. Aileron into wind slightly. Hand off the thrust levers, rotate, keep the Aircraft centre, and there's the aileron increasing to keep the wings level. There's the dead band, and we're airborne. Neutraliser controls, positive rate. Uh, gears coming up. And we're on the flight directors. There we are. Right then, guys, that's the end of the crosswind takeoff technique tutorial. I hope you found that interesting and learned something new. The inputs I was making on the controls today are very similar to the inputs that uh, need to be made in the real aircraft as well. Uh, obviously the yoke and the rudders are much lighter uh, than the real aircraft, so it does sometimes look like I'm over-controlling, but you can see how I use rudder to maintain sense line, used uh, the uh, control column to keep the wings level uh, using the ailerons as well. And the idea during that rotation, same rotation rate as we do for all normal two engine takeoffs, smoothly up to 10 degrees, pull through that dead band, continue the rotation to 15 degrees and uh, clean up. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to thumb it up. And if you want to stay up to date with the latest content, don't forget to subscribe as well. And I'll see you on another tutorial or live stream very soon.